This is my cheap Amazon auto transformer. It works fantastic to take mains voltage and regulate it down to something much lower, right down to nothing. This works with AC voltage and also known as a variac. It didn't always work good as you're about to find out. Out of the box, this thing didn't work at all and really confused me. So in this video, I'll give you an overview of this unit and we'll troubleshoot the crazy failure mode of this auto transformer. Hope you enjoy. This episode made possible in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for all your custom printed circuit board needs. They offer numerous services, different styles of PCBs, even assembly and parts supply. Okie dokie. This arrived from Amazon. This was in the local warehouse. I was kind of surprised. We got our instructions. Contact voltage regulator. And some foam, which is nice because this thing is wicked heavy. It looks like no shipping damage. So, I just wanted to see, like, I, I have no doubt this thing is probably going to work just fine, but I wanted to see for myself because the price is, is insanely reasonable. The price on this stuff just keeps coming down. Oof, so does all the stuff in the back of my workshop. <laughs> I'm digging tonight. So I might end up calling this a Variac in the video just because that's the name I was familiar with when I was a kid. Uh, proper term is Auto Transformer. Uh, anything in the instructions we should know about? Specifications for the different units. Uh, I'll put a link down below to this one. Interestingly enough, they do give you a principle and structure of, of the auto transformer. Neat. Well, one way to find out if it works is go ahead, plug it in. Contact. Huh, I think it actually just blew the fuse open circuit. It made a grumpy sound. And then no more grumpy sound. Huh. I guess it could be fine, but... It just blew the fuse. Huh. Why in the hell would it blow the fuse open circuit? <laughs> Is this why they give you a whole great bloody big bag of them? Interesting. I had no load on it. Why would it blow the fuse? Throw a comment down below right now if you know. The, I don't... I don't see why that... I'm thinking there must be damage inside. Huh. Well... Do we... Tear it down... To find out... I think I have to... And... Take a look... See what I see... Or, ah, we got lots of fuses. You know what? That's just for giggles. So, off, unplug. There's a chance that it was just a lousy fuse. Man, it blew the ratchet out of that. Hmm. Let's go down to zero. I I have to look at the replay and see. I thought I was actually going down. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Oh, helps plug it back in, Eric. Are we rolling? Okay, you guys are gonna be here to witness this. Okay. 
I'm gonna roll the transformer up. That's 110 volts. So, no issues. It's possible that there could have been just a little piece of conductive crud in there too. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get a light set up. One second. So I've gone ahead and I hooked up just my light here and I've got no output out of this. So yeah. She's hooped. We're gonna have to see what uh, what's up and down here, but uh, when she popped, she's dead, so peachy. I think I got a dud. Okay, before I go putting this back together, I found nothing wrong. This is quite odd. I took it apart. Like, okay, the solder joints are a little kind of, how you doing? They're nothing uh, they're quite bad, actually, but they're, they're solid. Everything's fine. So I'm not sure whether something was in there or whether those fuses were just junk, because I just popped a fuse into it, and it works fine. Now, I haven't put a load on it yet. Um, yeah, this other fuse, that's two fuses were toast. That makes no sense. Uh, something's going on here, and I, I'm just not seeing it. Measured the resistance, I looked at the brush inside. Uh, if you want to see, let me set you up. Okay, down in there, and not so well lit, you can see our wiper and our brush on the top of the contacts and everything's fine. I can't find anywhere where the wire rubbed through. Like measuring this with an ohm meter is kind of pointless. I, I need a motor test or an induction meter. It's just like, like a handful of ohms. So I don't know. I guess we'll put it back together. Okay, mighty Casey's down to his second last at bat. I'm wondering there's something with the nature of this. So I blew this fuse again, but with a difference. It was fine until I rolled it down and then it blew. So there's nothing across my output. Hmm, I don't know. I'm wondering whether it has something to do with the nature of the auto transformer down that low. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do just double check my measurements here. We with an load on it and powered up, we've got a light. If we go and roll that, down, it's getting brighter. Did they assemble this thing wrong? What is there? This thing is going the wrong V. So, <laughs> as we roll the voltage down, it's actually getting higher. So if we back probe, I don't need to back probe it. I can tell that by looking at it, but here's 130 on the scale. And if we roll that, there's 110, 95, and that light is getting brighter and brighter. And our voltage reading down here is actually going higher. So, <laughs> There's the mystery of our blown fuses. We're actually uh, going the wrong way and driving the amperage up. We're going from, I don't know what that is, like that light's pretty dim there. We, we, we can, we just have to measure it, but that, I wonder, is it gonna blow if I go open circuit? We should be able to back probe this now. Let's see, what do we got? Um, this is open circuit voltage too, so it's not the best, but, so, come on, there, 97 volts, you see that? My eyes are blind from <laughs> cranking that sucker up, alright, 96 volts, 
and at 110 we're pretty close to 110 but the lower we go the higher it goes there's 130 volts 140 volts so there's our problem there's why it blew the fuses when i rolled it down because if this is at 110 this is going to be outputting about 230 down here <laughs> yeah there's our problem okay well isn't that fun we're backwards so let's see if we can fix it Alrighty, I think I got it figured out now. <laughs> this is a little confusing. I had to wrap my head around it. But it looks like we've got the wiper and this side of our transformer coil reversed. I'm pretty sure the wiper should be going to our output here. And this side of our transformer should be coming to the fuse here. And that, I think, should make our transformer work again in theory but uh, i'm just gonna rethink that double rethink that before i go repairing this because uh, i don't want to be wrong um pretty sure i'm right though that makes sense we've got ground going here we've got our black coming to this side we've got our brown to this side these are in from our mains and then i th our voltmeter i think is correct here um definitely this makes much more sense the voltmeter across from yeah voltmeter across the load absolutely uh, across our output i'm pretty sure just these two are uh, diversified but I, again I, i'm gonna go off camera and think on that before, <laughs> before i go fixing it okay i triple checked before i soldered that and this is the only way this makes sense for me uh, i've got the wiper and the one side of our transformer coil swapped now and soldered on and we're gonna see what it does i'll leave this just one shot okay flip this up the light for the meter is is that on or is that oh it's just light bleed <laughs> it's just coming from my bench lights i'm like what in the world that isn't right okay i'm not sure uh, if i've got the knob kind of in the most perfect spot let's get the meter make sure we're on volts ac we are should be really wearing electrical gloves when i'm poking around with this but you get the idea do as I say, not as I do. Okay, let's roll the output up a little bit. I see a, I see a wiggle. I see a wiggle. 21 volts, 28 volts. That's more gooder. Yeah, buddy. 110 volts. And our meter is right in the green. So that explains that. Huh. Uh, unfortunately, I bought this from Amazon, and unfortunately, um, I'm well past my window, so I couldn't send it back if I wanted to. Uh, I would have had to fight with a manufacturer. So I'm going to go ahead and look down from the top here. We're going to line that up with 110, and we're off by nearly 10 volts. So what I'm going to do is let's set it for 110, because that... Might as well set it up at the top of the range, right? Um, if we're going to calibrate something, might as well calibrate it approximately closest to your nominal voltage, I suppose, would make most sense. So there's 110. We will turn the knob till we're bang on 110. The meter graduations are so bad, where there's no point in calibrating it with the, the analog meter. We'll use the numbers on the top here, and we'll just see how it does. We're still at 111. As me pushing down, turn the, the armature, the, the, the shaft a little bit. Before I powered that up, I did do a, I did uh, ring things out, as some people say, with my own meter too, just to make sure I didn't have any shorts or anything. Okay, let's go down to 30, there's 35 volts. <laughs> so, is not linear. 
That's why I said might as well calibrate it closest to the nominal voltage we're going to be working with. There, there's 60, so it's off by 9 volts. There's 80. We're only off by eh, just about 5 volts now. 100. Only off by a couple of volts, 3 volts. 110. And we're off by less than a volt. That's within the margin of error, that sweep. So I'd say that's that's where we need to be. And uh, and our meter is working. Our output switch works. We are in business. So I'm going to put this into service. Um, we're in business. Uh, it didn't cost me anything to do this repair. Uh, it was a head scratcher at first. That was a strange behavior out of it, but I hope... Uh, Hope I can edit this together. I'll just probably leave it as uh, <laughs> as complete as I can, so you guys can follow along. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, let's try an output. Huh? All that work, and we didn't actually put a load on it. So let's put our nifty little light on it. I'll turn it off. Just there. Now we should be able to. Roll that right down, and we can cut our AC voltage right down to zero zilch nada. No fuse blowing. Look at that. And we can crank it right up to the limit. I didn't measure what we're at on the limit. Bright dim, bright dim. So now I can control the AC voltage to uh, whatever component I need. It's not very often I need to regulate AC voltage. Like, I may, basically, probably just motor control is all that I can think of offhand. There was one case, it was a few months ago, and that's what prompted me to buy this, and it's a project I want to build. And this would probably be a relatively stationary component on the bench that allows me to... to ah, I wish I could remember what it was. Can't even remember what the project was, guys, but I'll remember eventually. But, yeah, we've got a tool. She works with a little bit of modification. Uh, that's the thing with some of this Chinese stuff. It is what it is. Uh, we get it for a heck of a good price, but sometimes you got to put up with a little bit of repair yourself. And like it is lab equipment, so technically the people buying this probably should be able to repair it. Um, you guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Is this a? Would you take a chance on this at the price? The it's linked down below. Or would you say forget it and go and buy an industrial supply version from a, a local vendor or whatever? It's a heck of a difference in price. So I'll leave it to you guys. I'll put the link down below. Cheers, guys.